The problem is that shortness of breath is a very subjective feeling that can be controlled by many different external factors, like current mood, physical condition and unusual situations. When a situation is frightening, for example, there is automatically an increased shortness of breath. These are all factors that can control and influence the subjective feelings, which is why it's a big challenge to measure shortness of breath during physical exertion. A patient's level of breathlessness can be measured during a six-minute walk test using the Borg scale, for instance. It's one of the tools pulmonologists use during exercise testing. We interviewed lung experts like Dr. Meyer at the Medica 2014. When you deal with exercise testing, it's important to know what parameters to consider. It's not enough to know the methods, you also need to know the methods surrounding these tests, which also include measuring shortness of breath. This is not a trivial matter at all. You need to become familiar with this tool. You need to know what is being measured and how to instruct patients for the measurement to subsequently be reliable. Blood gas analyses are an addition to exercise testing. The cause of breathlessness can usually be narrowed down using them, as Dr. Michel Westhoff explains. What's special here is that it's typically only the pulmonologist who has a so-called blood gas analyzer, which makes it possible for him to determine blood gas levels. But during the individual exercise tests, the walk test, and with the so-called oxygen saturation test, a so-called finger clip that is put on the patient's fingertip, you can already get a fairly good idea of whether the blood oxygen level decreases during exertion, for instance. But you need a blood gas analysis to make a more detailed assessment, of course. Pulmonologists or rehabilitation physicians who treat many patients with cardiovascular diseases or respiratory diseases are familiar with walk tests and spiroergometry. However, at a general practitioner's office or at an internist who don't have the option of blood gas analysis or oxygen saturation testing available, this procedure is not very common, of course. However, by using a regular oxygen saturation test, the general practitioner definitely would have the opportunity of making an assessment at his office on whether the perceived shortness of breath is possibly connected to lung problems. Conducting and analyzing physical performance tests is challenging. However, spiroergometry provides an added benefit, Professor Heinrich Wort explains, and not just for patients with shortness of breath. This method requires extensive knowledge of the physiological processes in the lungs and circulation, and thus considerable prior theoretical knowledge. Initially, this scares people off. It has the advantage of being able to measure biological performance, and not just based on some wattage numbers that you read off the ergometer, but based on the individual response of the examined patient or test person. This makes this method very attractive. This method is important to assess the operability of patients for major surgeries in the chest or abdominal area, for instance. Here, it can help to recognize risks facing the patient and decide whether the patient is able to have surgery or not. The method is also essential for determining an athlete's training regimen, but also for patients who use training programs to become more resilient. And it's important to narrow down the causes that limit performance. Belastbarkeit, die die Leistungsfähigkeit einschränken.